on this edition of In The Know, we are breaking down the top story of the week. Have you heard the term weather bomb? Bomb cyclone, perhaps? Well, we've been monitoring quite the messy pattern in British Columbia, not just one, but two weather bombs. Here to help break down all of this weather is meteorologist Rhythm Reet. Now, Rhythm, I think it's important for us to understand first what exactly a weather bomb or a bomb cyclone is. The names are interchangeable, right? Yeah, there's also, you can also call it a bombogenesis, and that's essentially when you have a low pressure system that falls 24 millibars within 24 hours. Now, when we take a look at the satellite imagery, this is the same weather bomb from Wednesday that impacted the BC coastline, and you can really see this was a textbook setup from the formation and the shape of it all. There were a lot of us that were cha chatting on Twitter, a lot of meteorologists talking about how this was just that perfect setup for it. So we experienced one in British Columbia on Wednesday as well as Friday. Now it's interesting, the Wednesday one is making almost like a reappearance. Yes, but it's not going to be a weather bomb again, definitely much weaker. Essentially what we have is both of these lows just doing a little dance next to each other. And this is actually called the Fujiwara effect. It's the interaction between two systems within uh, less than 1400 kilometers apart. And the reason that this is happening is because of the setup. We have two places of high pressure, one just south of the Aleutian Islands and another high pressure system that is just a north or in northern Canada. That's what's bringing a lot of the cooler temperatures across the prairies. And both of those are keeping both of these low pressures locked in, and that's why they are swirling next to each other. However, they will not, it will not be strong like it was on Wednesday, much more weaker as it has begun to dissipate. So that is good news. Now, this wasn't just a British Columbia story. This was a U.S. story. Uh, now we're talking about a Europe story, too. The question is, Rhythm, can we see this on the East Coast, too? Absolutely. A lot of folks across Atlantic Canada are well aware of weather bombs. Now, another very interesting story that's happening on an international basis is that there is a weather bomb called Storm Brett that will be making landfall and impacting Scotland and England through this weekend. It is expected to drop about 42 to 54 millibars as well. So even though the threshold or the uh, uh, criteria may be 24 millibars within 24 hours, definitely it can drop much more and become much more intense. Now this Saturday, today, we are monitoring heavy snowfall throughout the Prairie Provinces, Alberta specifically. Does this have any sort of influence on what we're experiencing this weekend throughout the Prairie Provinces? Well, when we are talking about the Prairie Province, we have this massive snowstorm pushing on in. And that is because all of the moisture that was associated with that weather bomb has been pushing into the prairies. That's what's going to be bringing some of those snowfall amounts as high as 3 to 5 centimeters an hour. Now this is just some radar our estimated snowfall accumulation from Friday evening into uh, around 5 a.m. on Saturday morning mountain time. And we've seen a lot of that accumulation begin. But the heaviest swath is going to be through Saturday afternoon right along the Trans-Canada Highway and the Yellowhead Highway. And with the wind gusts as high as 30 to almost 40 kilometers an hour, that's going to cause some whiteout conditions as well. When we are talking about the final amount of snowfall, the heaviest impacted areas right around the borders between Alberta and Saskatchewan, looking at 30 to 40 centimeters of snow. Nationally, it's looking like a cool down on the way. What does that mean for us in southern Ontario and even Atlantic Canada too? Well, the cool down behind all of this snow is going to mean more polar air settling across the prairies. And that's going to move into southern Ontario and Quebec as we head into December, also bringing our first few flakes.